If you want to know how long does it take until autophagy kicks in, then this video is just for you. I'm gonna tell you the truth about how long until autophagy begins. So make sure you click the like and subscribe for future videos like this one. Let's quickly go through some of the basics. Autophagy is a metabolic process that starts converting cellular debris and dysfunctional organelles into energy through self-eating. If you haven't heard about autophagy already, then check out this video that gives a comprehensive overview of autophagy. Although there's still much to learn about autophagy, current research is showing that most of the signaling happens through the pathways of mTOR and AMPK. mTOR, or mammalian target of rapamycin, is the body's master nutrient regulator that affects cellular growth, protein synthesis, and anabolism. AMPK, or AMP-activated protein kinase, is a fuel sensor that's involved with balancing energy-deprived states by maintaining energy homeostasis and mobilizing the body's backup fuel. mTOR inhibits autophagy because it makes your body grow, whereas AMPK supports autophagy due to the energy-deprived state and burning of internal energy sources. When under nutrient starvation or deprivation, AMPK starts to inhibit cellular growth by suppressing the mTOR-C1 pathway, which in turn forces the body to catabolize its weakest components. The more depleted your body is of certain nutrient factors such as amino acids, glucose and calories, the bigger the reason for triggering autophagy. Without the necessity, your body doesn't really want to start catabolizing its own tissues and recycling the old cells. Both mTOR and AMPK sense the presence of nutrients in the body and then the cells will decide whether they're gonna be anabolic or catabolic. Is there enough energy to grow or should we become more conservative? This process will also be determined by growth factors such as insulin, IGF-1 and mechanical muscle stimuli. Here are the things that will by default inhibit autophagy. Insulin and IGF-1 signal the presence of anabolic nutrients that promote storage and growth. They will activate the AKT mTOR C1 P70S6 kinase pathway that leads to muscle protein synthesis. This is the opposite of autophagy. Carbohydrates will stop autophagy because of raising insulin and blood sugar. You can still be catabolic and with inactive mTOR while eating carbs without protein, but you'll still inhibit autophagy because of the presence of nutrients. Amino acids and protein will decrease the necessity for activating autophagy because the body detects there's enough essential nutrients around. You can restrict your protein to the point of not activating muscle protein synthesis and becoming catabolic, but you'll still inhibit autophagy because of consuming some protein that activates mTOR. That's why protein restriction itself isn't an effective way of trying to increase autophagy or lifespan. Excess calories from any macronutrient will suppress autophagy. High amounts of protein, carbs, exogenous ketones or fat can all raise mTOR and insulin while suppressing AMPK. Although the spike of insulin isn't as high when consuming fat, it'll still be directed into storage eventually, thus decreasing the need for the body to conduct autophagy. In general, you can think of autophagy being regulated by the nutrient status of your cells. How nourished they are, how many amino acids do your cells get access to, how long have you been fasting for, what's your blood sugar, what's your insulin status, how many calories have you been eating, and what's the general energetic demand of your body. It's said that to activate autophagy, you need to be fasting for at least 48 to 72 hours. The rationale is because that's the amount of time usually people need to get into ketosis. There are no viable ways of measuring autophagy in humans, but it can be guesstimated by looking at your glucose ketone index and insulin to glucagon ratio. A lower insulin to glucagon ratio suggests more catabolism, ketogenesis, gluconeogenesis, fat oxidation and nutrient deprivation. A higher insulin to glucagon ratio suggests more anabolism, higher insulin, elevated blood sugar and nutrient storage. The glucose ketone index with lower blood glucose and higher ketones reflects an estimated insulin glucagon ratio with a lower score indicating higher ketosis and more AMPK. How long until autophagy kicks in for you specifically depends on the nutrient status of your body and the presence of nutrients in your bloodstream at that particular moment mainly glucose, ketones and amino acids. If you're not consuming too many carbs or protein on a daily basis, then you can expect to go into autophagy faster than someone who is consuming a lot of calories and has to burn through that glycogen first. Can I have that Milky Way? The more carbs or protein you eat, the longer you have to fast to get into autophagy. 
consuming excess calories also will increase the buffer zone that you have to burn through before getting into autophagy. That's why it's still better to practice some mild caloric restriction and stay around your maintenance calories. It's going to keep your body in a state of being able to go into autophagy faster and you won't have to fast for that long all the time to gain these benefits because fasting for too long can also have some negative side effects. Here are the things that will make autophagy activate faster. Fasting and eating zero calories is the surest and most effective way of activating autophagy. It will lower insulin, blood sugar, mTOR and deplete the liver from glucose and amino acids. Caloric restriction without fasting can help to experience autophagy faster during overnight fasts. If you're not getting enough essential amino acids, then you'd get into autophagy faster whenever you're not eating, i.e. while sleeping. The benefits of caloric restriction on autophagy can be achieved much more effectively with intermittent fasting. Going for a longer fast and then refeeding properly with adequate nutrients will give you deeper autophagy while preserving more muscle. Exercise and resistance training raise AMPK and thus support autophagy. Working out depletes the body from glycogen as well as amino acids, thus creating a bigger demand for autophagy. The mechanical stimuli also activates mTOR, which can be seen to stop autophagy, but the mTOR gets activated primarily in muscle cells, not the liver, which helps to sustain macroautophagy in the brain, liver, kidneys and other tissues, which is exactly where you want it to be. You want to have mTOR in your muscles and nerve cells to promote growth, but not fat cells or tumor cells. Instead, you want autophagy in those places such as the liver, kidneys, the brain, the mitochondria and not the muscles. Doing resistance training and fasting is the perfect combination for stimulating both of these pathways of mTOR and autophagy in the right places or exactly where you want them to, while avoiding the negative side effects of both of these excesses. You don't want too much mTOR, you don't want too much autophagy either and you want to have them in specific regions. So fasting and building muscle with exercise is the perfect combination for that. So this video hopefully gave you some insight into how long does it take to activate autophagy. It's never black and white and it's never gonna take exactly three days to get into ketosis or to activate autophagy. It's gonna vary hugely between people and what kind of diets they follow. On a standard western diet that comprises maybe of 50% carbs, 15% protein and 45% fat, it will indeed take at least 72 hours of fasting to get into ketosis and autophagy. On a low carb, moderate protein diet, you would probably get into autophagy within 24 hours of fasting because there's less nutrients to burn through. On a low carb, high protein diet, you'd probably have to fast for longer than 24 hours but you may experience more autophagic states in between meals. On a low carb, low protein caloric restriction diet, you'll probably experience autophagy within 24 hours of fasting and in between meals, but it's not as effective as fasting for longer and still eating adequate amounts of nutrients. On a high carb, low protein diet, you'd experience autophagy within 24 hours of fasting, but you'd be more predisposed to muscle catabolism. On a high carb, moderate protein diet, you'd still probably have to fast for 48 to 72 hours to get significant autophagy because it gives plenty of fuel to burn through. Regardless of what kind of a diet you follow, intermittent fasting is still one of the most effective ways of activating these pathways such as AMPK, autophagy and keeping your insulin glucagon ratio lower. If you want to know how to start intermittent fasting then check out my full guide to intermittent fasting ebook. You can now also get my new book Metabolic Autophagy that teaches you how to optimize these pathways for longevity as well as performance. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. Combo breaker!